Okay. Uh, hey everyone, welcome to the Android application security training. Uh, I'm Nikhil Kulkarni. I'm going to be your trainer for this course. A small introduction about who am I and you know what I do and all of that. So I am sure you're able to see my screen now. So I've been a security researcher and an international security trainer from almost three to four years now. So I, I currently head the security team at IGS India and uh, my main area of interest have been uh, web application security, mobile application security and also into uh, machine learning. Uh, I've also presented my research papers at uh, a bunch of conferences like uh, Know It to Hack Paris, OASP AppSec, KuCon, uh, you know, Null Security Meets and a bunch of other places. Uh, I've also been a big part of the bug bounty uh, programs uh, wherein I've uh, you know found vulnerabilities with various different sites like Microsoft, Adobe, Apple, and a bunch of them. And uh, I also currently lead the open security community called Null here in Bangalore. So that's about me. Uh, you know, I think uh, let's get started with the main part. Uh, I always make sure that I you know sort of show up this slide for every training that I take up. You know that you know whatever you learn from this presentation or this training make sure that you always use it for you know the constructive purposes than the destructive purposes you know this is completely for education purposes and uh, please do not uh, you know sort of go ahead and uh, pen test or sort of do any sort of testing onto any application without the developer or the organization's uh, permission so that's a small disclaimer okay so we could get started with the course agenda itself so this complete course of android application security is divided into four different modules so we have module one wherein we'll be looking mainly into the introduction to the android uh, mobile operating system as a whole uh, then we would look into something called as the android security architecture then uh, there is a specific thing called as sandboxing which is you know uh, running the mobile applications in an isolated environment so that is very primary to the mobile uh, operating uh, the mobile environment space so we'll be looking into that we'll be looking into also setting up our uh, security testing environment in the coming uh, sessions so we'll be looking at how we install or set up a, a, a bunch of applications how do we sort of you know reverse engineer the application and find the security loopholes and all of that and uh, coming to the module 2 we look into you know how the application certificates are what what is a signature what exactly is a certificate why do we sign an application or why do we sort of you know resign an application you know how the whole concept of signature verification works you know how you know how do we get to know the different set of app permissions that an application is asking and all of that okay so we look into look into this part in the module 2 uh, and as we go ahead in the module 3 we'll be looking at how do we you know bypass these android permissions uh, you know there's uh, uh, there's a really amazing tool called as drozer you know how do we set it up and you know how do we get more and more information about the different set of uh, you know application related components uh, you know how do we sort of uh, emphasize more on attacking those application components okay so we'll be looking into uh, these things in the module 3 okay then as we go further we'll look into the module 4 wherein we'll be looking at how do we reverse uh, the android applications working with bunch of things like a bunch of other tools like lockcat you know uh, you know what kind of uh, sensitive information we'll be able to disclose using Lockheed and all, all that, all of that. Then we'll also look into how do we inspect the network traffic that's going between your mobile application uh, or your device and your and the server. Then you know a bunch of other things like you know how the intent sniffing is done and how do we exploit the services or broadcast receivers and bunch of other things. So in the same module four we'll be also focusing on the very major aspects such as the OWASP top 10 uh, set of vulnerabilities which uh, in these days have become kind of like a de facto uh, you know security 
tests that need to be performed in order to ensure that most of the vulnerabilities uh, are not present in the application okay so how do we exploit these things such as insecure data storage or insecure communication or you know a poor cryptography implementation and bunch of other things okay so once we are done with that we'll also be looking at couple of advanced level topics such as i know how do we work with obfuscation techniques you know what are all the different set of obfuscation techniques that are there uh, you know how the static analysis is done using tools like mobsf so mobsf is an uh, again uh, another pretty amazing tool uh, that's uh, very much used in the mobile security space and you know we'll be uh, working with this tool as well you know so all these tools that i'm mentioning here are uh, you know are widely used in the security domain and uh, you know are usually uh, you know are, are are used in bug bounty programs and you know bug hunters and security experts you know in in this domain is for sure okay so we'll also at, at last we'll look into uh, you know how do we get into something like bug bounty programs you know wherein we find security issues with uh, all the big players in the market such as made be it your e-commerce sites or your ride sharing applications and all of them uh, and see how do we report it to them and how these bugs in return yield you a really good amount uh, you know either you could get paid or you know they would sort of send you some sort of a uh, you know a, a swag or probably sometimes you even end up getting hired by these big companies okay so this is part of the responsible disclosure you know that we'll be looking at you know once you find a security issue then exploiting it if you responsibly disclose it to the company you know they would you know make sure that you know you get a really good reward for that in return okay so th this was like the complete course agenda you know that we have uh, for uh, you know that we plan to bring in for this particular course okay so the orientation that we had already uh, had in uh, you know the previous uh, uh, you know session uh, you know we had like a really good number of students participating in the orientation just to sort of get a you know brief idea about how the mobile security space is okay but other than the orient uh, so now that the orientation is done this is going to be your first class wherein i'll be going in a much detail of how things are actually done it's going to be much more of a hands on session uh, and uh, yeah let's get started without anything so you may see that you know there are a bunch of concepts that i would be repeating from the orientation uh, session if you have attended but uh, you know uh, you know this is mainly to you know sort of ensure that you know people who were not able to be part of the orientation session for them i'm sort of just re, uh, you know going back to those topics so that you know even they become good at it okay so introduction to android okay so as we all know you know android is something you know that uh, is, uh, is is a major player in the mobile operating system you know uh, today we see around 80 percent of the uh, mobile phones uh, in the market have android as their operating system okay so a couple of things about android is that it is based on the linux kernel okay so the linux operating system uh, you know which we all quite know is 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 uh, you know we are familiar with is also the basis on which the whole android operating system is built on and it was developed by google and later uh, a, a lot of companies came in together and formed an alliance called as open handset alliance okay so it mainly allows writing managed code in the java language uh, it mainly started with the java language now there are a bunch of other languages that are coming in uh, such as you know a bunch of other things like xamarin there's cross platforms uh, like cordova xamarin and also react uh, uh, react native and all of them okay so uh, one thing about android is that android android has its own virtual machine which is called as dalvik virtual machine okay so which is usually uh, used for running the android application okay so uh, you know google purchased the initial developer of the software you know wherein and then it incorporated the android in the year 2005 okay so this is like a very basic introduction okay so we may not be able to sort of uh, sort of look, uh, be looking into this but, but it's kind of just needed for us to sort of uh, go ahead 
okay so open handset alliance is like an alliance uh, you know with a lot of organizations coming together such as motorola at&t google ibm and uh, you know uh, arm and bunch of other companies and sort of forming an alliance uh, basically to advance the open standards for mobile devices you know develop the technologies that will significantly lower the cost of develop developing and distributing for the mobile devices and services okay so you know these are like bunch of different company you know that sort of made a pact saying that okay so we are going to sort of come together and sort of work towards you know making the mobile operating system versatile and sort of easily reach, uh, reachable to the masses okay so this is quite really important considering uh, the security aspects of it android architecture is the main thing that we all uh, need to know okay so uh, like, again as i said android is a linux based operating system mainly developed for smartphones and tablets uh, it was founded in somewhere uh, 2003 by this person named andy rubin and uh, in 2005 google acquired it and uh, in 2008 google sold the first android phone and the 1.0 being the donut which is the version of the android operating system we look into the different operating uh, uh, version op the os versions of android in the coming slides okay but before that we got to really understand the android architecture so when i say android architecture let me just uh, make this a full screen okay so when i say android architecture so we are going to be looking at majorly five different uh, layers uh, the base layer which is the linux kernel uh, on top of which you will see something called as libraries and with that we have something called android runtime and on top of which we have application framework and we have the applications okay so when we look at uh, so we got to ensure that we remember this uh, you know this picture or this diagram uh if not all of these subcategories at least the major ones like application application framework libraries linux kernel and android runtime okay so let's get started with the linux kernel itself so the linux kernel is nothing but the directories you know uh, it it contains all these directories that would sort of combine your hardware components such as your camera or be it your wi-fi your keypad you know uh, you know your display your audio and your power management all of them sort of have these drivers so that you know the software or the applications could be able to easily utilize them and interact with these hardware uh, you know uh, components okay so the drivers usually take care of that and these form the part of the linux kernel okay so on top of that we have something called as libraries okay so these libraries are uh, made for a specific purposes such as okay if you look at it uh, the sqlite sqlite library is mainly for databases you know where the data you know usually gets stored on the phone you know that usually uh, is uh, you know stored in the uh, sqlite database then ssl would be for security then there are a bunch of other things like opengl sgl and media frameworks and all of them so these are for different different specific purposes something like the ui ux and all of that okay how the user interface or the user experience is taken care so for that we have you know different uh, set of uh, you know uh, libraries okay so we'll come back to the android runtime because this needs a much more detailed explanation uh, on top of uh, the libraries we have something called as the application framework okay so when i say application framework so these are nothing but okay so if you have like some basic experience with uh, you know uh, any other programming languages like c c++ or java so these are nothing like uh, nothing but uh, you know your uh, you know stdio.h files or iostream.h those kind of files okay the header files that you get to see right so these are pretty much like these so for an application to build a particular functionality it would incorporate these set of application frameworks so that you know it could be able to use them and uh, you know make use of th that functionality okay so something like uh, you know the location manager would take care of the maps 
and uh, you know the notification manager would take care of all the notifications that come up on the phone your telephony manager would give your uh, application the functionality of sending and receiving the messages and also you know sort of making phone calls and all of that okay so these are different set of application frameworks okay so then comes your applications okay where you see your the normal application with which you interact on a daily basis either be it your contacts your phone your browser you know your home or, or any other application for that matter be it your uh, you know your uh, uh, e-commerce uh, or your ride sharing applications or anything as such so all these come under the application layer so these applications make use of the application frameworks in order to reach out to these libraries and the linux kernels okay and uh, finally coming back to the android runtime so there are mainly two things here one is the core libraries the other is the dalvik virtual machines okay so the core libraries are the libraries that are specific to the java language okay uh, i know there are a lot of libraries that uh, you know come uh, pre-built and there's something called as dalvik virtual machine so this is something that is really important for us because dalvik virtual machine is a sandbox so when i say sandbox this is uh, something that i uh, know you i want you guys to sort of make note of a sandbox is a uh, is an is an isolated environment wherein your application would be running so when i say isolated environment it means that any changes made by this application will not uh, you know cause uh, you know uh, any problem to other applications on the phone okay let's say you have your uh, you know uh, e-commerce app let's say if it gets compromised uh, even if it gets compromised uh, other applications on the phone should not be you know getting affected so that is the reason why you know this dalvik virtual machine is uh, basically created this comes as one part of the security aspect uh, other than that uh, you know it becomes a lot more easier easy uh, from the uh, you know the operating system level also in order to segregate these applications into different uh, isolated environments that's one thing so uh, these dalvik virtual machines usually run a particular set of file called as dex files you know dot dex files so we'll talk about it in the coming upcoming slides okay so uh, just have a look at this particular slide you know uh, sort of if you want to make notes or something go ahead and make notes of it uh, you know sort of uh, you know you don't have to sort of uh, you know write down each and every single co sub component of this at least the main ones should do uh, i'm just leaving you know like 30 seconds for you guys to sort of uh, either take a screenshot or make note of it okay so i hope uh, you guys have sort of uh, taken notes on this let's move ahead okay so as i discussed uh, as we discussed so these are the uh, five major uh, layers of the android architecture okay so we move ahead uh, you know these are the different set of android versions uh, so android has a, a peculiar naming convention when it comes to naming its uh, android versions so it it goes in an alphabetical manner you know it started you know uh, uh, you know like the donut was 1.6 then we have eclair froyo uh, you know gh is gingerbread and honeycomb so it went on so on and so forth uh, so the nougat was one of the recent ones then after that we have oreo then a uh, pie and bunch of others so the also the q is also coming up in the upcoming days so these are the different set of android versions so uh, the thing about uh, you know the android security is that the security from the mobile operating system perspective is coming in uh, is becoming really intense as the day goes by you know the uh, the amount of uh, security implementation that the android is doing you know on every single versions uh, the, the newer versions it's uh, it's it's really amazing to see 
you know they are uh, making sure that the end user is protected but even then if you actually look at the security breaches that are happening you know the as they always say that hackers are 10 steps ahead of the you know uh, the security guys so it means that you know the amount of uh, the the way the hackers are trying to sort of find loopholes and sort of create some of the other issue with the applications is is pretty insane okay so let's move ahead so we look at something called as dex file which is the dalvik executable file okay so as uh, if we could remember uh, i spoke about dvm which is dalvik virtual machine okay so to execute the application uh, in the dvm the java file is compiled and the dot class file gets created so as we all know that dot class files uh, cannot be executed in the dvm therefore it gets converted into something called as a dot dex file so these dot dex files uh, are uh, are uh, created using something called as dot dx tool or dx text tool or dex dx tool okay so uh, you know as as i again said since dvm can only execute the dot dx files okay so using dx tools dot class files is is converted to dot dex files okay so what dx tool usually does is it removes redundant information from the dot class files it you know kind of removes more than 50 percent of the redundant information okay so that it makes the, the uh you know the java or the dot class files in such a way that it could be easily run on a mobile environment okay that's the main reason why you know that uh, you know uh, the dex tool uh, takes care of okay so talking about the android security model uh, and on, uh, now that we looked into the android uh, architecture you know uh, and we are kind of familiar with the different layers of it we look into the android security model okay so the security has been uh, you know given in android at you know these different seven layers so one being the security at the operating system level which is at the linux kernel level you know uh, then there is applications and boxing as we already discussed then there is secure inter-process communication like how two different processors would communicate with each other then there is something called as application signing uh, application signing would you know usually tell uh, on who's the developer of or the who's the organization of a particular application okay let's say you've got twitter uh, mobile application so if you you know if you could uh, get to see the certificate file of uh, you know twitter application you would get to see who are the guys who have signed this particular application okay so then we have the permission model which i'm sure you know we all are quite aware of uh, let's say uh, whenever you sort of try to install an application on your phone it uh, you know pops up a thing saying that hey this phone is act uh, want to wants to uh, you know access these 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 things you know such as you know it wants access to your camera your microphone your you know uh, the location your gallery your media files and bunch of other things so you either have the option of allow or you either have the option of deny okay so that's the permission uh, thing then we have something called as google bouncers so this google bouncers is not really uh, present on the mobile devices per se but considering the whole of android security model this is present uh, on the play store itself okay let's say whenever an application gets uploaded onto the play store uh, you know the google would run that application in such a way that it would sort of look at the way the application is running and what are all the different links or servers it is trying to reach out you know is it doing any sort of malicious activity or no and all of that so that is taken care by google bouncers itself okay so we we'll look into all of these in a much detailed fashion as we move forward so uh, exercise i'm sure this i had already done it done during the orientation class but i need to also make sure that the people who are also joining in who were not part of the orientation class i don't really want them to miss out on anything so i'm doing this again okay so if you guys have already done this it's really good you know we'll just have like another uh, time doing this okay so in this exercise what we basically do is we open up a command prompt get an adb shell onto the device that is connected to our system 
and then check the uid of the different applications that are running so, so the reason why we are doing this uh, we'll know it in some time okay so what i would do is i'm gonna run my jenny motion so more on these tools in the coming slides okay so i know there is a lot of uh, confusion going on if at this point of time that's fine okay so i'll i'll sort of give a brief intro on what these tools are why we use it and all of that so this is my android emulator that i'm running at this point of time so this pretty much works like an android device okay so it allows me to do a lot of different set of things so i'm going to put it up right here i'm going to open up my command prompt okay so what i'm going to do is use this uh, another tool called as adb adb stands for android android debug bridge it usually comes with your installation of Android Studio on your device okay so let's say so one of the commands for ADB is ADB devices so what ADB devices does is that it lists all the mobile devices that are connected to your system so at this point of time I, ha I only have this particular mobile device that is connected so I'm gonna say I'm gonna click enter so it will show me one particular device that is connected currently okay so what i'm going to do is i'm going to do, use another command called as adb shell okay it's totally fine if you are not able to sort of uh, if you're getting confused at this point of time because i just wanted to sort of show you why uh, uh, so the more on these set of tools we'll actually go in detail in the uh, you know coming slides or sessions but uh, just for now just remember these two different set of two different uh, you know command lines adb devices and adb shell so i click enter so i get access directly into this particular device so this uh, i get a root access into this particular device okay so what i'm going to do right now i'm already in my uh, mobile device all i'm going to do is just run the command ps so ps will give me a list of all the processes that are running on this particular device so when i do this i get a list okay so if you could see here this is the user this is the process id this is the parent process id the v size the rss wchan pc name and all of that so all these are different sort of uh, parameters uh, of the ps command so here as we could see so all all these other things are not much really necessary at this point of, at this point of time for us the main thing that is really needed for us is the user okay so what i'm going to do is i'm going to scroll down as we know see here this is the uh, bunch of uh, app, uh, processes are running under the root username as we scroll down okay there also we get to see media system install key store drm and all of them all of that there is also a set of usernames which start with u0 okay so u0 underscore a49 u0 underscore a66 and you could see that the package name is given here okay com.twitter.android so which means that this is the twitter application so the username for this is u0 underscore a49 okay com.android.chrome which is u0 underscore a87 okay so these are different set of uh, usernames that are given for every uh, single application okay so the reason why let's look into the uh, presentation So uh, let me look into this. Okay, uh, we are done with this. So security at the operating system level. So the, 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 the way the security is implemented at the OS level is by enforcing the permissions and by giving unique UUID for each application. So as we saw that every uh, application, either be it your Twitter or your Chrome browser, you know, every uh, application has something called a UUID, 
you know if you also remember it started with u0 underscore a 76 or you know 97 or something like that 96 or something like that right so the reason so the reason why this is done is to have a complete check on what application is doing what uh, thing and you know uh, restricting the application based on the permissions that you know uh, it has been given okay so this is the security how it is taken care at the operating system level okay so as we move forward uh, there's another exercise okay i'm sure people who attended the orientation also did this okay but uh, i don't really want uh, you know people to sort of miss out on anything so i'm going to do this again okay it's hardly going to take any time but this is pretty interesting so it says that open the messaging applications on our emulator device send an sms to any number once sent get an adb shell onto the device and navigate to the sms application so this is how we navigate then we also pull the database onto the local machine uh, read the database using the sqlite db, db browser okay let's give it a shot and see what really happens okay so right now i've got my messaging application okay so i could create another new message okay so okay so right now uh, as you already remember i've already done an adb shell into the device with the pre, pre uh, with the previous exercise so i'm gonna send uh, to some random number okay hey uh, hey guys welcome to the android application security training course okay so i'm going to send this message okay so this i had i think i had previously sent another message here okay so i think we could delete this okay so for now we have hey guys welcome to the android application security training course so what i'm going to do is uh, i'm just going to go back okay so uh, we need to remember that the application data gets stored in a particular direct which is uh, data slash data so this if you could remember okay so uh, as i had mentioned earlier that this is based on linux kernel so if you do an ls command okay this will show the file system of this particular mobile uh, i mean the of the android operating system so for us uh, at this point of time the important place for us to go is into the data folder okay where all the application uh, specific data is stored so we are going to do cd data okay so even inside this data there is another folder called data let's do an ls now we see a bunch of other different sort of tools like ssh security system and all of that but again there is another folder called data so we again get into that particular folder called data so we do again cd space data okay let me clear the screen so right now we are when i do present working directory pwd command it is in slash data slash data folder okay so when I, then then i do an ls command so this will list all the different set of applications like com.android.email so when you see com.android dot some something something you know that is nothing but the package name okay that is specifically given to that particular application okay so for now we are looking at this one com.android.providers.telephony so this is the directory where our data that is specific to the messaging application is stored okay so what we will do is we'll get into this directory so as you see here all the directories are uh, these directories are nothing but all the applications that are installed on your phone and the data of those inside those applications are stored under this particular uh, under these uh, you know subsequent folders okay so let's do a cd space com dot android dot providers dot telephone okay i'm going to clear this i do an ls command 
when I do a list, I see there are th three different ways the data is being stored here. For now, considering the message uh, data and the phone number data, it seems like it should be in the databases itself or not in libraries or shared preferences. What I could do is get into the database folder. Okay, so I see a lot of different set of files here of four different files of which MMS, SMS.DB, telephony.db and there is db journal files uh, we may not be in really interested in the uh, db journal files but we are more interested in the mms sms.db file okay so what we'll do is we'll uh, try extracting this particular mms sms.db file uh, onto our actual desktop here okay so here on our desktop let's try to sort of you know uh, extract it uh, for that, I'm going to go ahead, uh, shell, new tab, basic profile. Okay. So I need to copy this particular, this particular path. Okay. So I'm going to go here, ADB pull. So this ADB pull will pull out that particular directory that you are specifying here onto the, onto this place here. So since right now we are not in our desktop, so let's come to the desktop here. Uh, if I do a PWD and in users liquid, I'm going to do CD desktop, clear the screen. Uh, I'm going to do ADB space pull space uh, the folder, which is our databases. Okay, so here we see the database folder is being pulled out. So let's open this up. Okay. So this is something that we wanted to look into. So there is another tool that I'm going to be using SQLite DB browser. I open that up. Okay, so I will open the database. Uh, desktop databases. MMS SMS DB. Okay. So this is like the complete database structure that we get to see here. Okay, how things are being stored, how things get inserted, updated, and all of that. Okay, uh, we may sort of need it at a very later stage, but for now we are only here for browsing the data. So when we click on browse data and go into the table that would interest us, uh, there are a bunch of other different sort of tables for now. It's only SMS that we would want to look into. Okay, so this one two three four five six seven eight nine zero is where we were looking at. Okay, so if you look at the body, it says, "Hey guys, welcome to Android Application Security Training." Okay, so that's that's uh, where we are able to sort of extract the database folder of the messaging application okay so let me close this okay so what we basically figured out let's go back to the presentation again okay uh, yeah, present. okay so what we understood here is the application sandboxing okay so each of the application runs in its own sandboxed environment so when I say that, so what I did, my actions and to what I say totally contradict each other, you know, because we as a normal user, we were able to sort of get into the databases of the messaging application, also pull out and extract the database and do and, and sort of read it, right? But that certainly does not happen in the normal environment because on a normal basis, our phones aren't rooted, okay? So what do you mean routing of a device? So when I say routing a mobile device, it means that you're giving complete root privileges. You, uh, you know, you're gaining complete root privileges of the device. So when you buy a new phone, your new Android phone, you are using it as a normal user. Okay. So you are, you do not have access to a bunch of files, a bunch of directories, a bunch of folders or you know, a bunch of places where, you know, uh, you're not supposed to go. Something that is specific to only an application or a system uh, level uh, folder access. But when you become the root, root is nothing but the administrator 
uh, user in a, a Linux environment. So when you say you have rooted the device, it means that you have got the administrative privileges on the device. Okay, since all the emulators uh, usually come with uh, you know the root uh, the rooted uh, feature uh, come rooted itself, as in they come with the administrative privileges itself. Uh, so, you know, hence it becomes a lot more easier for us to sort of do application uh, and a sort of uh, get into the internal file structure of the applications directory and all of that. Okay, so the whole reason why i wanted why i did that exercise was just to show how the application sandboxing really works okay so each of the application runs in its own sandbox okay so one application cannot access the data of other application okay so slash data slash data is the directory where you will see all the applications data to be present okay so this uh, this is about uh, you know the application sandboxing so there is another exercise uh, which is mainly onto the manifest viewer dot uh, apk file okay so this uh, exercise also i have done previously but i would want to sort of emphasize on this uh, wherein we look into the manifest file okay so what is a manifest file we'll uh, you know sort of try to understand it uh, yeah we could do that right away itself so uh, every android application will have something called as android manifest.xml file okay so this file kind of gives you a complete picture of what this application is all about now it will tell you how many screens the application has got what are the different sort of permissions that the application is asking you know what kind of actions that this uh, application would do what are the services it would invoke and a lot of other dif different things okay so this android manifest.xml file will give a complete holistic and a comprehensive uh, and a detailed information about that application okay so what we'll do is we'll look into these android manifest.xml file and just look into the different permissions that an application would ask okay so let's do that mm. what we'll do is we'll open up the We open up the emulator okay so we since we already have the manifest viewer.apk file okay so this is easily gettable uh you could go to your just a second you could go to your play store and search for manifest viewer okay this one so you could install it and sort of uh, get started with looking into the manifest files. Okay. So once I open this up, it will sort of list down all the different set of applications that are present on this device. Okay. So let's look at uh, any random application. Let's say I'm going to look into Chrome. Okay. So look android manifest.xml file okay so if you look at this closely uh, you know if you can okay this kind of fairly gives us uh, an idea of what are all the different user permissions are i know that it, that it is asking so all these permissions here you know download without notification camera request install packages reorder task read contacts bluetooth admin bluetooth access network state so all of these are different set of permissions that it is asking okay so we get to see this here i think in a better way we zoom in okay so these are different set of permissions that it is asking then there is something called as activity as we move ahead activities are nothing but your different set of screens on the android device okay so the more uh, we'll get into uh, you know understanding this more in the coming sessions okay for now we the only reason why we came here is to just to see what are all the different set of permissions that an application would ask so to get that details you know this is the best place the android manifest for xml file okay so uh, you know you could also go ahead and install this application on your uh, mobile phone as well and try to 
look into the manifest files of different applications that are installed on your phone. It wouldn't cause any sort of harm onto your device. That's for sure. But all you could uh, do with this is with that is just sort of look into the manifest file of that of any application on your phone. Okay. So with that, let's get going. Let's get started again. I mean, let's get going with our presentation. Okay, so Android permissions. Uh, so this is really important for us to sort of uh, understand. Uh, so uh, see, Android permissions are usually application defined, but are granted by the user. But user granted permissions. Okay, so uh, permissions are declared by the developers of the applications. You know, while they're building the application, and Android manifest.xml file will have all the details that are related to the permissions. Okay, so what? What kind of permission that an application is asking and you know uh, why is it asking and all of that you uh, you may not uh, get to know why is it asking but you will certainly get to know what set of permissions that that the application is asking okay then the user will be asked to accept or deny deny the permissions before the installation of the applications so as you uh, i think you might have noticed this earlier uh, that in the early versions of the android uh, we used to you know uh, get asked whether we would want to either accept all or deny all uh, but in the recent versions you know we have the option to uh, specifically select a particular android permission whether to accept it or to deny it okay so this is about the android permissions okay so hey, i i Michael, i'm not uh, really Yes, Michael, sorry for being a spoil sport here. We have a session starting in another two minutes. Just wanted to do a quick time check on that as well. Uh, sure, sure, Karthik. So what I could uh, do is I'll continue the upcoming uh, slides in the coming sessions. Anyways, okay. I was almost coming to the end for this session though. I'll continue right. uh, with the rest of the you know uh, coming modules uh, in the upcoming classes. So sure. uh, I will be sharing a bunch of. Uh, uh, you know uh, zip files with uh, on Google Drive with the uh, audience. You know I want you guys to sort of go ahead and download them based on you know what uh, you know system you're using, either Windows, Linux, or Mac. And you know so that uh, in the next uh, you know uh, towards uh, the second session, I guess yeah, we'll be installing them live and sort of uh, using them uh, something like Jenny Motion that I use today or ADB. Uh, you know, we'll be installing them live, and you know, we'll work on that. Okay. Okay. Right, great. Thank you, Nikhil. Thank you so much. Okay. Thank you, everyone. Take care. Thank Bye, you. all. Yeah.